Welcome to the Maple Syrup After Show, designers discussing design run episode 82, and we were talking about two heads are better than one. That's right, we were talking about co-design, and we had Matt Loomis and Isaac Shalev on the show. Um, myself, I do a lot of co-design, and one of the people that I'm doing co-design with is our other host here, Tiffany. So um, what, did, uh, what were some takeaways that you got from today's show? Well, I think we need to reevaluate our relationship, Daryl. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think... Uh, they made me sound like a cheating whore. That's what they <laughs> You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. But no, it's... Uh, the point that they talked about how when they first were discussing their establishing a co-designing relationship, the fact that they discussed, um, like, what gaps they wanted filled was, was like, really eye-opening to me because it was just like, oh... Yeah, we should do that. Like, totally. We, we didn't really do that. Um, so it's definitely something that I feel that we need to have a conversation about. Um, yep. But otherwise, uh, oh, I forgot to tweet about the app. Let me tweet really quickly about the after show. Um, so that was the big takeaway for me is that we need to reevaluate our yep. strengths and, and what, we're build, what we're bringing to the relationship. Nice, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt and Isaac are being very strategic in great ways uh, with uh, their co-designing. They're, I, I think they're, you know, really the the up up and comers. Uh, you can see it already. Really smart designs. Really fun games. Um, building some key relationships with a variety of publishers. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing kind of the next few years when these games start trickling out and people start to recognize um what an isaac and matt game looks like um i think that that'll go a long way i think also just the topic in general of co-design obviously i'm biased but i'm very adamant about co-design i really find a lot of positives from the experience and i like unlike them i like to design with lots of different people because i like to learn from those relationships and that's not to say that I won't repeat design with people. Um, I like to design more than one game with people, but I do think it's uh, an opportunity if you can find more than one person that you can design with. Um, and also because I'm doing it full time, it, it gives me the luxury of being able to do it more than just um, on the side. Yeah. So. Versus early on, I was very adamant about I would just design with Stephen Sauer because we had found, you know, a relationship that worked, that co-design really clicked. Uh, but practically speaking, um, he can only really work on a few games at a time, and that's totally respectable because he's doing a ton of other things, uh, being a father, uh, being a husband, being a, a, a helper to his wife's business, uh, a variety of things. So when you're juggling all those different things in life, uh, I understand not being able to do also board game full-time design. Yeah. Um, well, and that's the other thing. Like, you, you are basically doing board game full de full-time design, which would make sense why you need so many co-designers. Right. Because... They can't keep, we can't keep up with you individually. <laughs> individually, maybe, because other things in life are happening, So, and I get that. So uh, one of the fun things, too, uh, we, we touched on it a little bit, is when you throw it out there that uh, you're open to co-design, um, you may hear from different people that you don't expect. Uh, Isaac told the story of uh, he first threw it out there to John Gilmore, um, John is someone who, again, is doing this full time and is very open to working with a variety of people. So John and myself have done uh, had a uh, a game series actually signed um, that hopefully will be coming out soon called uh, Outpost, and it's actually just a small small game of fifty four to sixty cards in a deck survivalist game that plays two to five players. Um, you might even play one. We're still playing around with that. Uh, but the idea is that you are actually trying to survive through, you know, a month worth of uh, onslaught from these different characters in your outposts. So you might be in the Amazon, you might be in Siberia, you might be in Chernobyl, uh, Area 51. So we have a variety of these different decks that um, each kind of work off the core mechanic, but uh, you get to fight different monsters and survive in different extreme locales. 
So um, that, that was a game that John and I did, and that really came together because I commented that I hated co-ops, <laughs> and he's a co-op guy and we said okay well let's work on a co-op that we'd like and one of the things I said was I would like a co-op that's really small and you could just travel it and take it wherever you were so that if you are going to work with a bunch of different people you could do it anywhere you wanted so our design restraint was a deck of cards so yeah the I would say the most the co-ops that I enjoy the most are the ones that require no table that are mostly just co-op storytelling games or something like that so and the other thing that i said is i hate um alpha takeover and so in this game everyone has to make decisions based on looking on two cards and choosing one so all the time you might actually while you're simultaneously choosing things you might keep what other people would have told you to keep and such so everyone's decisions matter so that's nice um marie oh you can now hear xena going uh marie asked Daryl, how do you, how are you feeling about the Sangrata campaign? Huh? Yeah. Oh, thanks for asking. That's uh, yeah. It's been one week. I wasn't here last week when it launched because I was on vacation. So uh, it was really exciting at Grand Con getting to see it on demo for people. And I actually got to demo it for some and it was just fun to watch people get excited about it and get it. And like, even like call over like their friends or their spouse and say, Oh, you got to check this out. Like, and, so, yeah, it was really fun. And so far, I think we're about 25 backers away from 1,500. So Wow. Yeah, that I am so psyched about. So um, thank you to everyone, all you 1,475 of y'all that have backed. And uh, I'm hopeful over the next just, just under three weeks uh, we have to try to – or 19 days. Uh, 19 days to try to – Maybe hit triple digits would be pretty awesome. I think that would be uh, pretty cool. We're at 72 right now. so. Yeah, that's... Whew. Yeah, that's I'm really, awesome. really proud. Floodgate has done an amazing job with the campaign so far. Um, they, um, they're chatting to everyone that has questions and even trying to figure ways to adapt things to make sure that it's exactly what people want, answer any questions people might have. So... Go floodgate. Yeah. I was going to ask you a question, and then I totally forgot because Zena just sounds so pathetic. Aww. <laughs> um, yeah. What about – okay, so what was the key takeaway that you got? From yeah. I mean, uh, definitely the, the talking up front I think is really important, and I probably have sped through that process too much of late. So I think there is a little bit of similarity there. Um, I also really thought it was important how they talked about uh, things like defining um, like the communication side of things, like how Isaac was talking about how he does 95% of the, you know, the after talk and things like that, but still like keeping, keeping Matt completely informed and even talking through things before replying. I think that's really crucial is that you have one communication person, but, even though that person is talking, they're always talking to the other designer as well and making sure they're on the same page. So anything like if there's a decision to be made, sure, it's one person replying yes or no, but making sure to talk about that with their co-designer before they say yes or no. Or if a publisher asks for suggestions, to talk to their co-designer before like replying with suggestions. I think all those kind of things are really important so that there's still kind of a, a professional flow to the communication, but on the flip side, still everyone's involved. My mic was muted. That would... great. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Uh, no, it's. I think that one of the things that I've seen you do a lot is you're just really you know a lot of people and you're just genuinely really engaging and friendly. So I think right now you're just like, yeah, let's let's design. <laughs> like, yeah. So. I I think, too, one of the things I'm learning, and I don't think this is a bad thing, but sometimes you figure out, like, it's just not going to work. So um, I think uh, they said, you know, uh, using John as an example again, I mean, Isaac said it didn't work out uh, for them, and yet they're both great designers. So that doesn't say you're a bad designer if you can't co-design together. It's just some dynamics are just not going to work. So even myself, I'm friendly with lots of people, but that doesn't mean that I can co-design with everyone. So... Some people, it will work, and there will be a flow, and there will be, you know, 
when you reach exciting moments and it's like kind of affirmation of like, okay, this works. Like yeah. for example, for us, we had a co-design uh, session a couple weeks ago and it just was awesome. Like at the yeah. end of it, it was like, I just felt awesome about like the progress, but also just the flow of it. Like even afterwards, it just felt like a good, not even just end result, but the way we got there. And yeah, so, it, it oh, really sorry, you jump in there. Yeah. Well, I was going to say last, the last session we had, it felt, more like I think we made really great strides in progress and it felt more like it, it didn't feel like work right like um, and now I'm realizing Xena cries whenever she hears me <laughs> <laughs> which means she probably forgot to turn her noise machine on yes we got the dog and noise machine um, <laughs> but yeah it felt more like just a conversation just like we were hanging out right. which was great but I know that I know that's not typical, and I know that we're definitely going to have sessions that are work. Yeah, well, and so, so no matter what you 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 aren't, but also there's just certain times that you're just never gonna. And if there's gonna never be kind of that flow, then it's probably best for people to not co-design together and try to find someone else because there is there is uh, dynamics that work better than others. So um, yeah, don't be afraid to say I'm just not feeling this, and also don't be too quick to pull like, you know, the eject button. You know, sometimes it might take a few sessions before you find a groove. Um, so yeah, and know like your weaknesses, your strengths. I mean, I was talking about this on the way home from Grand Con. I came home with uh, Josh and Helena Capel. And it was funny because I was talking to Josh. I've known Josh for years. He's even done art for games of mine. And I said, yeah, why don't we co-design something? And, and he joked and said, you know, I'd love to, but I'm a control freak. And yet, you know, as much as that's a joke, we talked through that a bit and it was, you know, there's just certain strengths that you have that you want to work through. And there's some practical things you need to think through. For instance, um, if you're co-designing a game, you're splitting your money. Well, if you're trying to do this professionally, sometimes splitting your money is not a smart idea. So that's a, a, a realistic um, issue. Uh, things like... Um, Maybe you're the type of person that you only work well in person, and if you're not in the same location, then that's not going to work very well. Or I mean, there's a lot of different kind of red flags that can come up. So yeah, and I feel I feel something personally for me. I can work long distance, um, and the idea of doing a Slack channel was great. And we're totally going to seal that. I'm going to set a Slack channel up for us because I live in Slack. Um, but I think that the schedule thing is super key, regardless if you're meeting local or online. And I think having a consistent weekly meeting with like yep. deadlines and goals, I think is super important. Agreed. I work, I work that way. I mean, that, that's, that's one of the reasons why I think we function well is that we like that, that structure and, and, you know, some sessions will be more productive than others, but at least that continued flow gives you space and time to measure, you know, if you're on pace and where, you know, what you're trying to achieve. So I think also practically speaking, and if people didn't catch this from the, the show, they should, um, you should be working towards shows. I mean, those are real practical times to pitch games. So give yourself uh, realistic windows of time to create games, test games, and then make sure that that lines up with then time to, to pitch them at, at shows. So right now is actually an amazing time to start gearing up um, either for if you're, you got something close, getting it ready for BGG Con. Cause then you, you know, you have a few weeks, I, I don't know exactly, maybe like six weeks or something till okay. something like that. So you could be gearing up for that. It's probably too late. Um, you probably should be doing final touches if it's for us and uh, BGG con, you could be getting it a little more ready. Or if you're working on some bigger games, this is time to start getting, you know, your winter phase of R and D and development so that in the new year for the new crop of conventions, you're ready to have your game to show. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why um, Daryl Lauder, who organizes Unpub, I think that's one of the reasons why Unpub is so early in the con season. It's mm -hmm. so that it's a show where you can go and you can bring your prototypes and you can do that last big final push of playtesting so that you yep. can really polish after the show and then you, you're, ready, you're ready for con season, pitch season. Yeah, you got it. So, so give yourself permission over this winter to take your time develop and create those games that you have shaken around in your head and uh, maybe even find a co-designer to help you push through uh, this winter, this fall winter season 
so that you're ready in spring to go to something like Unpub and really put it put your game through the play tester um, juggernaut and uh, and then pitch it uh, to the convention season shows. So I know that Zen probably we talked on this last week, um, and Zen might be better to broach this subject. But I, it's something that I'm curious about. What uh, what's the difference between getting a co-designer versus getting a game developer? Mm, yeah, great question. And uh, we should actually have a few upcoming episodes where we'll be more focused on that. But I think uh, let's talk about it for a couple minutes before we wrap up. I think um, both are, are key questions. I've actually been asked in both scenarios to either join on a project as a co-designer, which in my mind means you're, you're along for the ride the whole way through. And yeah. so uh, that takes more responsibility, obviously a little bit more long-term pay potentially because you're in the royalty game. Um, but the developer role, it seems, and this isn't always true, but it's usually a flat rate fee. Um, is usually seeing their money right away uh, for their time. And they're not taking the credit for the design. They're coming alongside and trying to refine. You know, So think of them almost like, uh, sandpaper, where they're they're gonna polish some stuff up. They're gonna they're gonna scrape some some of the jagged pieces off, and then say, "Was this what you were going for?" Um, versus, I think the co-designer is all the way through the process, really trying to make and cast the vision of what the game experience will be, and then go through the rigmarole of risking putting their game out there and and uh, kind of being judged by that. Yeah. So it's more. So basically, what I'm getting from that is, if you feel like you need a partner in your design to keep you motivated and also to help keep you accountable, maybe for keeping up mm -hmm. your design, and also to have a sounding board and just um, just a general support system that yeah. having a partner or partners, you can always co-design yeah. with multiple people. Absolutely. Um, Co-design is the way to go, and if you're looking just for someone to come in and give an outside opinion for like a small period, um, yeah. that's a that's a developer. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. That's what that's how I see it. I think that was well said. So, so on that note, with you saying that so articulately, let's uh, call it a show for this week. I'm really looking forward to next week where we have uh, Gil and Jeremy on the show and we'll be talking especially about player counts and designing with player count in mind. I think that's going to be a really meaningful conversation. So uh, till yeah. then, everyone, I hope you have a great week and don't, uh, don't be shy. Send Tiffany and I and send uh, any uh, tweets or Facebook messages or whatever. We love chatting to people, um, getting ideas for shows, or if you just have a specific game you want to chat to us about and uh Hopefully no animals were harmed in the making of this episode. Oh, she's just sad. But I don't know if you guys can see, right? I'm just going to point it out, right? You see the little white dot in the blackness right there? Mm -hmm. That's Abby. That's the cat. Let's you know, see if we can shine some light on her. Oh, it's like a spotlight. I see. <laughs> She's my little co-designer. She loves the attic. Whenever whenever she sees anybody going up to the attic, she immediately runs and beelines for that chair. So, wow. Yeah. It's well, just an animal show here. Anyway, <laughs> maybe next week I'll get Xena up here, and then the show will have no focus. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in next week. Bye. Ciao.